Good afternoon, folks. It is a really miserable day today. It's a good day to be inside, warming up and staying dry. Uh, we'd like to thank you all for stopping by. Uh, on a day like today, a good cup of hot coffee or chocolate or tea would really be good. I'd gladly make it for you, but I think your arms are going to have to be awful long to reach out and grab it. <clears throat> I was just sitting here trying to get ready to discuss some stuff with you on this video. I looked up on my bookcase up here and I noticed a photograph that, we, that was taken of Sue and I on a pack trip. Oh my gosh, now, probably 23 years ago. I bumped into the Olympic National Park we were for the Park Service there. We were with some old guys that were originally doing what we'd ended up doing for years. And in fact, this was their last trip and I took over from them. But um, it's in the, uh, in the Home Sweet Home Meadow of, over the top of the First Divide, which is, oh, it's a, about uh, three and a half miles from 1,200 feet to 4,700 feet. It's a heck of a climb. But I was just looking at this picture, and I'm going to hand it over here, take a look, let you take a look at it if I can. Uh, if it'll show up, I'm not sure. But uh, that was actually our first trip in for Sue and I with, with the mules to, uh, to support the Olympic National Park. Um, can you get that, Sue? By the way, Sue, you hear I'm talking to this person, Sue? My, my sweet little gorgeous wife, Sue, is behind the camera in charge of everything here, so i got to behave myself and watch my language. Okay, so I'm going to set this back down again. It was a beautiful trip. Um, it's one, it was just beautiful in there. It's a beautiful piece of ground. Now, we worked for the Olympic National Park uh, for over 23 years off, and, and, and we worked for them in the form of volunteer packers. But we didn't just, we weren't weekend warriors. We went sometimes 25, 30 trips a year, uh, sometimes two, three times a week, two days, three day runs, uh, was not uncommon. So we had an opportunity to, to develop a lot of different skills and, um, um, and have different adventures in there and figure out what equipment works, what equipment doesn't work. Um, and our goal here, we started out of, the, out of that project, out of that experience, we started the Mount Canary Company. And the goal of, of, the goal of our Mount Canary Company is to, to help people get out in the backcountry, enjoy their horses and mules, trail riding and safely packing. Rather, I just used that word safe a couple times, but the, it's the key. If, if you're not out there doing all of this stuff and you're not safe, you're not gonna have a good time. And the only thing is going to be a beneficiary of that your, your your spouse with your life insurance policy. So we don't want to have any of that going on. So the first book we wrote was the Packer's Guidebook, which is, a, again, which I told you in another video, which was the um, a basically a pack and workshop clinic in a book. And um, then for several years, at the same time and for several years following, I have been a writer for, a columnist rather, for the uh, Western Mule Magazine, Trans Luma publication, which I still am doing at the time of this video. And I have, I have written uh, multiple articles for them. Uh, I, for, fortunately, Sue is a really good editor, and that's why they've gotten out there in one piece. And then with the books, Sue's my editor. Well, basically, Sue and I write everything. I do the scribbling, put some of the ideas down, and she tells me if I can do it or not. So the, where, we're, why I'm, where I'm going with this, and we've got a fly that just visited us, where, where I'm going with this is we took all of the articles that we've written and we've kept them. And we compiled a goodly number of them in our first, second book, which was called Trail Skills and More. <clears throat> now, what these are is, what these consist of are different articles that'll tell you all kinds of different things. It's a it's a basically a potpourri of, of articles of, but all about riding and packing in the backcountry and uh, camping with your animals. And uh, 
it's it's uh, very very useful. We've probably in the works we'll have a third book, which will be also a trail skills and more, which we which I'm pretty proud of the material we've been able to put out and put together for people. But unless I put it in some form, I can't share it on and on and on. You'll have to follow me around, and that's going to cost you buying me a lot of beer. So, but this is really a pretty interesting book. Um, I I think. Let me go over just some of the subjects. I'll flip through it here and go over just a handful of subjects. One of them I got here is on high lines. Uh, another one, the next one up, I'll come on, it, neither water, water, water everywhere, nor not a drop to drink. And it's talking about sanitation, getting water, finding water, how to drink, how to get good water back from the country. Stay dry in the saddle is another one. And around here, that's kind of an important issue. And, and we'll go on here, flip a little further so I don't take up all your time. Um, <clears throat> saving your bum in the backcountry. Basic riding, saving your butt. In other words, how can I stop getting saddle sores? And keeping your keeping your saddle straight. How do I keep my saddle straight? Um, how to how to uh, do I do I use a muzzle or don't I use a muzzle? Muzzles are really an interesting thing. Uh, you know, you can probably get by with one animal dragging them behind you with a muzzle. Without a muzzle, you put two behind you. One of them is surfing off trying to eat. I'll give you a quick, real quick little story here. Um, <clears throat> there was one trip I took up in the Dos Matos, and uh, it was kind of a miserable late September day. I came out with four head, and I camped in there overnight. It was, it was a long trip, uh, and the gang was tired, and I, I camped in there overnight, and I was coming out, and I thought, you know, I see all this grass that's still along the sides of the trail. I think I'm going to give a, a break. I'm going to take leave the muzzles off. So I tied the muzzles, took them off, tied them to the back, back of their pack saddles, and took off. Next thing you know, my arm's being pulled out of the socket. I'm looking, and, and, and it's, it's just a ruckus going on back there. And I look back there, and it looks like a bunch of water skiers going all different directions. Completely unsafe. Somebody's going to step over a high line, over a high line, excuse me, over a lead rope. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a rodeo back there, and I'm a, and I'm a long way from anywhere. So what do I do? I stopped. Told them they had their chance. They blew their chance. They put their muzzles on and came out. I rarely ever go without muzzles anymore. So muzzles are kind of an important thing we've used for years. Um, people don't think may not even thought of using them, but I do really believe for us they've saved my bacon many a times. Uh, these are some of the articles. Uh, white hair is not fatal. Or is it? In other words, at the end of a packing season, uh, you start to show up a little bit of white hair, some fuzz, not a big patch, nothing sore, but a little little white hair along their back, which is just an indicator of heat that's been hot under those pack saddles and under those pack pads. So if you watch it carefully, normally it it'll show up in the fall when new hair comes in underneath. Next thing you know, spring comes and it's gone. So, and I, I have yet to soar up an animal to a point, and I've got a lot of pack hours under, under, on, under my saddle, but I've yet to soar up an animal um, in the pack street, yet. So, um, so anyway, there's, there's quite a bit of stuff in this book. Um, um, care and feeding of the packer. <laughs> What's, what to bring with you in, in the, as far as tools and necessities of the, on a pack trip overnight. That I take. Now, now, mind you, everything you're going to hear from Sue or I at workshops or on these videos or a telephone call or anything of that sort is you're going to pick up what we think we need to do for us. This is how we do it. Now, there's, there's if, for example, in the Packer's Guidebook, in, a, in articles in this book, when we tell you how to do something, we are kind of giving, again, we're giving you our take on it. Now, we are not going to be your expert. We are our own experts for our own use. We're hoping that you will take some of this information that we're giving you and be able to, to um, incorporate into your own program. In other words, taking this, build on it, discard it, build on it, use it, whatever, but it's yours. From that point on, it's not my information, it's yours.
Okay. Well, thank you all for dropping in to visit with us. I want to leave you with one final point. I want you to go ride this as often as you can, but safely. Thank you very much for stopping by. Soon I would like to say, see you later.